Okay. <laughs> Here we are. Okay, we are filming. Uh, oops, probably should have done that differently. Okay. Uh, so let me lean in. I want to thank everybody for coming out. We're going to do our best to try to include everybody here. Um, so just if you lean forward, the camera will get you. Uh, we're going to talk about the uh, massive surge in random Californians talking about secession in the last two weeks. Why that's happening and what it means. But before we do that, let's just get down here. So uh, here are, this was a Reddit feed. That came out this week. Um, can California just secede from the United States and have Bernie as president? Honestly, California could do really good for itself if it's separated. I have honestly thought about this as an idea. I'm proud to be a Californian. I would move in a heartbeat. I would come from Oklahoma. Finally, some good moves. Let's do it. So uh, there's that. That happened this week. And then here's a tweet by Shebus for Bernie 2020 squad. Um, and I'll point out 367 retweets and 2,000 uh, likes. And Sheba says, if California and Washington are being cut off by Trump, anyway, let's just secede. Uh, here's another one. Um, office drone. What would you do if California voted to secede from the union? Uh, again, about a week ago, two weeks ago. Not as many likes, 24. And then here's another one. Wilhelm von Schlanger. <laughs> um, Schlanger, Schlanger. Uh, 340 retweets, 2,000 uh, 2, uh, plus likes. Travel ban California, Washington if you want. But we get to secede from the U.S. And Katie Porter will be our president. So uh, recently we had a massive uptick. And Bernie supporters who seem to be mad, they think something's not going right with Bernie, and they're saying, let's secede randomly. And then at the same time, literally with an overlap of that on social media, there's another cloud of Trump's going to cut us off, let's secede anyway. So we have Trump's going to cut us off, secede. They have, I feel bad about the way Bernie's being treated, let's secede. These are quantitatively about 5,000 voices on social media. Our movement doesn't know. I've asked everybody in our movement. Nobody knows who these people are. Nobody's heard of them. Nobody's met them. Yeah. So why in the last two weeks are thousands of Californians talking about secession that our secession movement has never heard of and never talked to before? And why are they using our same talking points? And now I turn it over to you. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I think that I think the first thing the, the first thing to clear up is Everybody who comes to secession, everybody comes to the idea of California as an independent nation. It's an it's not a revolutionary process. This is an evolutionary process. It's an yeah. evolution of thought. Um, a real that we hit a realization, and everybody hits the same realization at, at a different point. the re, The point here is when somebody realizes that they're not going to see. The federal government fix itself. Yeah, something's mm -hmm. something's wrong. Mm -hmm. Something's not not going to happen. For the Bernie people watching, basically watching the DNC. I think, and this, I you know, correct. Be me honest. Wrong, Let it loose. But watching the DNC, watching the DNC manipulate the results. The American DNC. The American DNC. Well, it's a that is the DNC. It's like the California's Democratic Party ran by the American Democrat. Right. Yeah, out of New York City. But Brady. the Seeing the DNC basically manipulate the results, see them, see them, pu see them pushing, pushing a status quo, pushing a status quo political agenda. And this time, I mean, unlike, I mean, with Hillary, we saw it, but we didn't see it so blatant. Mm. It wasn't so blatant. Mm. This time, this time it was. This time it was all but laughing and laughing in these laughing in these Bernie supporters' faces and saying, "This is not going to happen." You know this is not going to happen. For Californians, especially for Californians with a with a quote unquote progressive agenda, and that is a broad span. Let's use it a broad span term. They're basically told that their values, their progressive values in California, that they have here, they're not going to see on the national stage. Hmm. They're being dismissed. Hmm. They they've just been dismissed. Hmm. 
And I'm not sure what it's like, and I believe that that's a lot of us. Have, a lot of us have started to see that. Whether and it's it happens for conservatives and for for conservatives and for progressives and for liberals and for and right up and down the spectrum. When you reach that moment, when you when you reach that moment, where you don't see the U.S. federal government in any way, shape, or form, you see no path forward. Then secession is secession becomes the only viable alternative. Uh, just to back up what you're saying on the Yes California Facebook page, the most popular post that we had mm -hmm. uh, in the last four months by likes was this one by Hannah Mimota that said, "America may never accept democratic socialism, but a California nation will." Most popular post on our Facebook page in months was this particular comment. Thoughts, feelings, everybody. I would agree with that. That uh, the uh, U.S. is committed to capitalism as they understand it, um, which may be a understanding or a misunderstanding. But uh, it's a basically it's a default position. Okay, it's whatever it is. It's not cap. You know, it's not socialism. Okay, thank goodness we're not a socialist country. Blah, blah, blah. Whatever that means right. in the eye of that particular beholder. Right? Well, uh, we get to see, we're experiencing it now, how capitalism handles or does not handle twin crises. Okay? The, the uh, coronavirus outbreak and the uh, crash of the stock market. Okay. Is that what people are reacting to now? Is that why California That's, are talking about that? Well, it? between that and the perception that uh, of the Sandernistas that they are <laughs> being uh, blocked. Okay. And most of the delegate counts went to Biden under circumstances that if it happened in any other country, the U.S. would be calling it uh, for regime change. Okay. Right. You mean the Iowa poll? By yeah. The well, the not not just the mechanics, there. but the discrepancy between the official results and the exit polling. It's all in one direction. Where did you get this information from? And it's outside of the uh, uh, just uh, recently. Uh, it's because it's still coming in, see. Okay. And it's outside the margin of error of most uh, exit polls. So if this were happening in any other country, the U.S. government would be calling for regime change based upon the fact that it's not a functioning democracy. They've done this in Venezuela, in Iran, in Russia, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Um, except when it's a government that they like. Okay. That, like, say, the Saudis, they don't even bother with elections, along, amongst many other things, but they like them. Uh, so we have a situation now in which the Sandernistas are to the point where they're seeing two things. Uh, one is the DNC is selecting the candidate most likely to be beat by Trump. Okay. You couldn't stand a weaker I candidate. Know, I, I don't know if that's... Well, uh, that's I what the Sandernistas are saying. That's what the Sandernistas are saying. I don't believe that. I don't believe the DNC's perception is that. The, no, the DNC perception is that they got the strongest guy. Of course it is. Yeah. Because if they if they didn't believe that, they, they wouldn't be, you know, leaning the scales so heavily in his favor. Uh, they're scared of social democracy. Mm -hmm. Despite the fact that until 1992, they were a heavily social democratic party. Since the days of FDR, let's let's let me let me hear uh, how would you respond to that, and then um, Aaron, if you jump in after, well, I, I, and then Danny, if, if we want, it's like if we want to to go back a little bit to the to the to the Bernocrats, basically mm -hmm. the, 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 the supporters of Bernie. Yeah. Um, I think who are who are the thing that the, the thing that that comes through the best for me was uh, was a quote from basically that I got from Steve Gonzalez. 
that what the DNC is doing here is they're lining up delegates for Biden. But where they're lining up the delegates from? Basically from, and they, they, have great, they have great titles for them. They talk about the black vote, they talk about, they talk about uh, you know, the Bible Belt vote and what have you. But it's, it's one of those, Biden is getting his delegates to become the Democratic nomination mostly from places that will not vote for him in the, in the general election. Ooh. Mm-hmm. So what is happening is when these you, when people... When you say these, won't vote, you mean that the electoral college votes right, won't Right, the electoral vote college votes won't yeah, translate. Okay. In the Deep South, the Bible Belt, the Rust sure. Belt, oh, yeah, in yeah. these places, these that. are the places that are breaking for, that are breaking for Biden. The problem, the problem with that goes, these places, you know, as we say in California, even the Republicans here are not are, are not generally anti-gay marriage, aren't generally anti this right. or anti that. Right. When we talk about the Democrats, and the, when we talk about the Democrats of the Bible Belt, the South, etc., we're talking about pro-life oh, Democrats, etc. Oh, okay. Dixiecrats. Dixiecrats. Okay. So what we're Still, talking about here is kind, Biden, kind of, yeah, kind of. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm painting in broad. Yeah, it's yeah, a yeah, panel, yeah, yeah. so I'm painting in broad in broad strokes. But it, it's one of those things where the even the Democrats here, by California standards, the Democrats in in the in the Deep South, the Bible Belt, the Rust Belt, these Democrats. Are the centrists? They're the real life. Cent- they're the real life ones that the that the media will refer okay. to as centrists. Hmm. They are more religious. They are more. They are a little. They are more conservative by nature, especially socially conservative. Yeah. African Americans are very conservative. They can be. Yeah. They can be. I mean, I've I've met some that are not. I've met many that are not. But it, it, it's it the is a South. case of. But when you when you come back yeah, when you come South. back to it, yeah. the the indicator goes. Does it do any good? To select your presidential candidate based largely on the opinion of people in states that because of the Electoral College, he can't win anyway. So you're saying they are setting this up for Biden to lose, whether intentionally or not. Whether intentionally or not. Mm-hmm. What, yeah, right. All but, Southern African Americans really the South's not going to go for Biden. And for and for Bur- and for, for Bernie people. For Bernie people, what this is setting up is this, this is setting up where the, the people who are basically going to be his delegates are are almost as far removed from from Bernie and his Bernie and his platform as Republicans. These people might as, these people almost might as well be centrist Republicans. Mm-hmm. So, in effect, what you what you'll end up with is a Biden in a Biden in a Biden versus Trump. You're going to end up you're going to end up with a center to right paradigm for the election and everyone who everyone who is pro Bernie is going to be is basically all is feeling completely is going to feel completely excluded whether it's from whether it's from just their candidate not being being given a reasonable chance at, at being elected or socially and structurally Biden says no Medicare for, you know Medicare for all no we don't need that we right. just we just need Obama we just need Obamacare right but Obamacare is hollow is cratering hmm. that's like right and his uh, immigration policies under Obama were abysmal mm-hmm. to the Latino voting electorate yep. and when he told a Latino vote for Trump when the guy asked him about his criticism of that period that just yeah that told everybody how that's going to be on the immigration so you just nailed health care that's two three strikes mm-hmm. anti yeah. uh, San and I'm not a Sanders fan but. You're right. Those two things are going to be totally anti Sanders. Oh, I'm a, uh-huh. I'm, a San, I'm a Sanders fan. I I don't believe he is the only. I don't believe he's the only. He's, he's the only candidate that in, that could run a could run California. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean that's that's where I see it. It's like mm-hmm. it's not only is Bernie being dismissed, but everyone, but basically everyone left of center. Mm-hmm. Is basically being told, thanks but no thanks in the general process. Wow, mm-hmm. wow. Yeah. And if you talk about California, you know the left coast, eighty percent, eighty percent democratic vote. You know, eighty percent democratic voters. Mm-hmm. There's no way to not perceive this as an additional dismissal to the way our electoral college votes are treated. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, you vote. You know, it's like, well. 
California, you know, all 40 million Californians are going to vote, but we're going to give them five minutes and go back to South Carolina because, you know, uh, mm. look at this. Mm. No. They're being dismissed. Not only, it's like, not only, are there, not only is the candidate who's winning here being dismissed, but the values are being dismissed. Mm. And if you're a Bernie, if you're a Bernie crap, you have every right to be mad. Well, and this just I don't I don't know how to parse some of the coronavirus stuff and how it relates to this, but all I know is this political situation is a disaster for all of us because you know, Tim Carney is one of my favorite um columnists. Uh, he writes almost every day for the Washington Examiner. And he he was going through some demographic stuff for Hispanic Californians and how on a lot of social issues they actually tend more towards the right, but they were responding True very strongly to Bernie's campaign here. And I just think it's so ironic that Bernie even felt the need to campaign in California because I just assumed he, it was going to him anyway. Mm. That's part of the problem is that the polarization between the two parties, they have their paths that they're going to go for. So Biden is being pushed. Oh, cool. Sorry. So Biden is being pushed because it's assumed he has the black vote and that seems to be the case. Sure. Um, but they don't have to like Jason. Jason Riley is a conservative communist for the Wall Street Journal, and and he he's he's black, and he's he's like the reason that more uh, minorities aren't Republican in this country is because they just don't reach out to him. And the reason the Hispanics in California were responding to Bernie is because he was reaching out to them. He was asking them for their support in a state that he didn't even need. Like I mean, he needs it in a state that he didn't really need to campaign in. Um, that's really disturbing that the Democrats and the Republicans don't feel the need to reach out to form coalitions at all. And when we look at why we're voting for a president, for me, these people are all horrible candidates. Trump, Clinton, all of them are bad because none of them are really federalists. They don't care about freedom and they're not going to fight for everyone's freedom. They're, they're, they're the head of a political party. And they're going to fight for that political party. I think the president's the president should have to renounce stuff like if he's going to be our head of state and our head of you know all the different things that he's supposed to be at this point in our our government. He should have to renounce like political party. He's supposed to be vetoing horrible unconstitutional laws for the people for the states. He's supposed to be protecting us from bad legislatures. He's not supposed to be the prime minister. So we're voting for people on, on agendas. We're not voting for people based on how, how much they're going to fight for the freedom of all Americans. And the truth is, we're, we're different. All these states, all these places are different. Democrats in the South, they're different than Democrats in California. Like you guys are saying, the Republican Party here, yeah. it's not that different. If you're a real conservative, Republicans in this state are not that different from the Democrats in this state. And it's been like that for a long time. So... Right. There's these these more, are pair fiscal conservatives. Yeah, than, right. Yeah, that's that, what that social. Conservative. Jerry Brown was a fiscal conservative. Thank you. Yes. Oh, Thank was he really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we fought him over that. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, that, you would just, know. <laughs> but before we do that, just for the audience following along, I want to point out what Aaron Gleason, our conservative, said. He said, "The GOP doesn't reach out to Latinos. Yeah. So they don't reach out to Latinos in California." And he said that in 2020, 2020, the main Democratic Party, uh, Biden, uh, Warren, the rest of them, did not, did not attempt to reach out to Latinos in California. Bernie Sanders did. He is the one that the Democratic uh, Party trash as a not real Democrat. And that's the only guy who spent time reaching out to Latinos in California. So it looks like the American Democratic Party does not care about reaching out to Latinos in California because their mainstream candidates all did not do that. And the maverick who doesn't follow them and is claimed by Democrats as not a real Democrat was the only person to bother doing that. That's what I heard you just say, Aaron. Am I wrong? Oh, no. Yeah, I think that's absolutely right. Because they assume, because they're not wrong, that they're going to get California anyway. And if you're a real Californian and a progressive Californian, I think you should take that as a spit in the face. I would. Because oh. these people claim to be progressives and they claim to be representing you, your values, 
but they don't feel the need to reach out to you at all. That's ridiculous. They're just, a, it's, it's almost a colonial mentality. It you is. belong, California belongs to us by right. Bernie, <laughs> Bernie actually <laughs> reached Settle out. Settle colonialism. <laughs> yes, that's, that's, that's okay, let's that's use it. No, that's, that's just the, the politics of, that's, that's the politics <laughs> of the wallet. do that too. Yes. Oh, no, no, that's no, absolutely. The point is that if the new conservatives were doing that, yeah. now we're seeing the mainstream Dems do the exact yeah. same damn thing. Yeah. Well, we, yeah. we, Time to leave both parties, exactly. California. Amen, well, we, yeah. We, we have too much schism over the isms. That's really... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but it comes it comes back to um, the the Democrats. We talk about the Democratic Party. And it was like we're talking about Biden's strength with the black vote. So Biden right. goes to the American AME Church and you know in awesome. Charlottesville right. and what yeah. have you. It's like right. I didn't see him reaching out to the black community in California. Oh damn! <laughs> I also didn't. I'm damn. also not seeing either party reaching out to the Asian community in California. Which is, yeah. We have a vast Asian community that no one's talking to. The, I mean, the Latino community is obvious. It's like the, the Latino community. It's like faces faces the wonderful choice of apathy or hostility. Yeah, it's mm. a good choice. It's like <laughs> the, where the it, it, it's almost. It's it's Greek tragedy. It's one of those. Our best hope is to be utterly ignored, <laughs> because at least if one side will utterly ignore us, they, you know they. they you know, just real quick, we're not we're not reaching, but we're not reaching out. They're not reaching out to minorities in California. They're not they're not reaching out to anything in California except the ATM machine that is California. <laughs> yeah, I just, yes. just that's uh, where we're at. I that's, just I'm, I just want to interrupt. I'm sorry to back up that you're totally right. Here's Willie Brown. Willie Brown is the most famous African-American politician in the history of California. Kamala Harris is now a little bit more famous. Uh, but Willie Brown has been the most powerful African-American in California. And he said, quotes, Biden didn't even come to the California Democratic Party convention. And that's his face of exasperation. Wow. Of, Why are the California Democrats backing this man? Famous African-American, thorough Californian says... You picked who? Uh -huh. <laughs> you did what? Why'd you do that? And I would also recommend everybody to take a look at Kamala Harris's video endorsing Biden. Watch the video. You'll notice her face do this. Biden's the greatest guy. <laughs> I totally back her. Watch the Kamala Harris video. She hates herself. She is arguing with herself. Her body is spasming. There's micro expressions all the way through the whole endorsement video. Biden, don't don't believe me. Watch the video. Oh, so we no. got the top two African American politicians in California. Oh, One of them hates herself for endorsing. The other guy said, "You did what?" And I think that completely backs you up, Hal. Right. There's like there's no there, there's no there's no outreach in California except to except to get paid. They could. All the politicians do the same thing. And if you are a Californian, you watch the federal politicians from both parties, all parties. Mm. Because let's face it, we've seen the Libertarians and the Green Party too, guys do this too. Mm. They show up here, they do a lunch behind in a gated behind someone's gated home or what have you. Yeah. Pick up a comically large check. Yeah. And they're back on the airplane. Bill Clinton spent extra time here to get a haircut. <laughs> that, really? I mean, it, uh, what about Obama? I mean, he was here like every three weeks for money. <laughs> for donations. For money. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, he was just right wow. here in Hancock. There, yeah. No, there, there is, there is that. There's an axiom in politics that says if it's a big check, pick it up personally. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Hillary, exactly. Hillary yeah. in 2016 did not campaign in California. No, she did at the very end because Bernie was doing so well. And right before the California Democratic Party, the California Democratic Party in 2016. When it looked like Bernie was going to win, Hillary went on TV and told every Californian, doesn't matter. I already got the nomination anyways. Right. So she told everybody in California, I don't care what your vote is. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. I'm in charge. That was 2016 special message just for Californians. Wow. And now we see the California Democratic Party won't even campaign here. Mm -hmm. The lead did not campaign here at all. The first time Biden ever set foot in California in the season was in Oakland right after he won the nomination, to go, look, I won the nomination! Mm. But yet he spent no time talking to the people of Oakland this entire time to listen to their concerns. Mm. 
Weird. Mm-hmm. Well, let's talk about words that are missing from the national election discussion. Drought. Wildfires. Homeless. Where? Well, these, these, yeah. they are in the national discussion, well, but it's well, usually Trump using them to dump yeah, on California. Yeah. To dump on California. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, but, I'm, but, we're, but we're not hearing any of the Dem- We're not hearing. No, any yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, that's no. that's right. I watched right. all the Dem debates. They touched homeless once, uh-huh. and it was to attack Steyer. Well, I'm going to. Oh, I'm going to yeah. the only time they brought that up. Considering, wow. considering mm-hmm. we're considering we're living in the we're living in the Coronaberg weekend or the coro- uh, coronavirus weekend. <laughs> Coronavirus weekend, because you know it's either going to start clearing up by next weekend or it's going to be a lockdown. So this is the yeah. coronavirus weekend. Mm. We can still travel and get together to talk. One thing that I've been saying, and one thing that I'm not hearing any response back, and it's like I'd like to put it before you, before before the August panel that we are. <laughs> it's a que- no, it's a question. It's, it's a simple, <laughs> honest question. It's like it's it's one of those, it, and it's kind of an oh my god question that goes. What happens in California when the coronavirus hits the homeless population? Mm. Yes, I've thought about mm. that. I mean, what happens? What happens when this when this COVID nineteen virus hits that petri dish? Mm. We're talking about one hundred and fifty thousand people, possibly, possibly more, in this state who are living with who are already living with compromised immune systems, camping mm-hmm. outdoors, mm-hmm. You know, sleeping in the cold. Yeah. It's you know, intense, living. literally intense. Intense, literally, yeah. yeah. And TVs. In, in, in sanitary <laughs> conditions on top, yes. uh, which mm-hmm. to propagate right. the, the That's virus. Uh, yeah. what, happen, what, yeah. happen, what yeah. happens in California when this virus... When this virus ends up in a cocktail with whatever's floating through the floating through the homeless camps, of which no shortage. Everybody who everybody who's had anything to do with the homeless knows that that diseases, outbreaks, what have you, minor outbreaks, colds, flu viruses can be devastating in these communities. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now we're going to throw this in there. What's this going to well, do? That, so, sorry. Go so, uh, so, Marcus, I just wanted to, uh, I'll come back to Hal's and we can all come back, but I just wanted to put in my thing, uh, my opinion, I'm, and I'm going to go back and again, always to kind of connect it back to independent California. Um, so this is about just, I'm going to talk about uh, Bernie Sanders uh, supporters, but this is about what we've seen maybe since the uh, time of the impeachment that has progressed as rapidly, practically, as the virus itself, is we've seen uh, an, an impeachment, uh, and I predicted this before, we've seen an impeachment in the House, we all knew that most likely the Senate would not do it. Those were predictable things. Californians have been watching all this. Libertarians have been watching them. Uh, Bernie Sanders, uh, just uh, 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 average Democrats have been seeing this uh, in full. So, after that, the steps, uh, after that, we had the, the, the impeachment. Then we had the thing with Bernie and and uh, Biden. Um, and I predicted to Marcus, and he can tell you this, the night before when all the medias and everybody was say, saying, uh, Biden's out. That's it. He's never going to make it. He's like out of the race. Even Biden himself thought he was out of the race. Yeah. Uh, he's admitted. And so, uh-huh. well, I said to Marcus, I said, you bet he's going to be, uh, he's going to come back up. Why? Simply... If, if you've been watching uh, all the events, is that the, the institutional Democrats will never let somebody like Bernie Sanders uh, come up, uh, uh, whether it's the delegate uh, system that's broken, same thing as the electoral for California is broken. They will never let that happen if they can uh, help it. They were really scared. They had cold sweats, all of them, uh, and stuff. And, um, and so... Uh, basically, that's what exactly what happened again. And like John, uh, we we're talking about John. Uh, he, you know, uh, they, they stole Bernie last time, and he saw it too that they were going to steal Bernie again. Mm-hmm. And that's exactly what happened. Um, and and now we're going into uh, uh, my next prediction, of course. And I think some of you guys uh, 
uh, agree that Trump is going to win the next election. Yeah. Um, it's, it's pretty likely seeing the candidates that we have anyways and, uh, and the broken system. And again, that's going back to the broken system. Any of us or any person that becomes um, uh, a advocate for, in, uh, for an, uh, independent California has to realize that it's broken. You cannot, well, Californians cannot fix it. The federal government cannot fix itself. Um, uh, and, and so since we can't do anything, since our vote uh, every time uh, goes unheard, even this one with Bernie, you know, uh, where we had a majority and stuff went unheard again. Uh, and so they, that's where you have to come to the conclusion where you go, okay, there's nothing fixing. This is the second time uh, that Bernie got stolen. This is, uh, you know, this is the, the, the uh, uh, again, Trump's going to get elected. How many, uh, how much can Californians tolerate is the, is the question right now before they react and go, okay, the only option we see is to separate. They're starting to think that. Libertarians Absolutely. are starting to think that. Conservatives, for another reason, are yeah. starting to think that. I agree. Uh, and, so, uh, and, and, and so uh, I think for our movement, bringing it back to the movement, and then the coronavirus, who knows what's going to happen, It's going if it's going to be mismanaged uh, nationally and in California itself, uh, people are going to start, you know, putting one and one together and two and two and three and three and go, okay, uh, we see that this is the only way and maybe are going to start thinking more openly. But like I've always said, Californians are resilient into their beliefs that they can still fix the United States, that they don't need to leave to do that. I think that's and, starting to crack. That's yes, right. and, but that's, yeah. that's, that's what I think we've seen. This that's what we're yeah. seeing now more and more because of insult to injury. After step by step by step by step, you know, uh, it, when you're hit with one, one earthquake, and then it's okay, it's over. You go, okay, well, that wasn't right. But when you hit with an earthquake and an aftershock and another aftershock and another aftershock, you go, shit, I better take this seriously. <laughs> uh, maybe it's time to move or to do something and move yeah. out of this, yeah. this area before the fall just like opens up. But that's basically what's happening. And I think right now we're in a good position. And just going back to Bernie Sanders uh, people, we're in a good position to get them uh, to come on, like you said, the tweets and stuff where they're gonna say, hey, uh, you know, we've been cheated. Uh, the, these guys are saying in independent California, the system's broken. Yeah, we see it now. Libertarians are seeing it. Uh, we right. see it. We see it now. Uh, so, uh, yeah, let's go. Let, let's get investigate and let's get. And for our organization and the California independent movement, what I want to finish with is that it's uh, uh, it, it's in under really extreme and bad circumstances. But I think that's what people need when you see that people are never proactive. That's why there's wars. That's why there's this. People are just complacent until they're pushed and until they're scared. And believe me now, they're getting scared more and more. And the corona is going to scare them even more. That might be the thing that takes down the whole system uh, uh, that 